Hi, in this 20 minute video, I'm going to give you a short overview of the topic of sound and also to go through some of the questions that came out in the last few years. Remember to like and subscribe. Now we're going to look at sound waves. First of all, the type of wave. Sound wave is a longitudinal wave. It is not a transverse wave. Transverse wave are your water waves. So vibration is perpendicular to the direction of wave travel. This is transverse. Longitudinal waves are like this. So vibration is left right, waves also go towards left right. So if we were to illustrate with uh, maybe a series of markers, let me just place them out quickly. So the particles in the air, without disturbance, maybe they are like fairly equally distributed, you know, constantly colli colliding and all. But let's say if there is a sudden uh, vibration that happens, bam! Okay, so it will, it's going to cause an increase in pressure at one side and this increase in pressure is going to later bounce to the next particle and then it can bounce, bounce, bounce. So let's say if we were to take a snapshot of it halfway, you will have a phenomenon like this, which some columns or air particles are much closer together. These are what we call the compressions. And some columns of air particles are further apart. This are what we call the uh, rare refraction. So here is high pressure, here is low pressure. And the energy of the sound wave travels, so it will alternate. So then it goes, which here you have compression, and here is space apart. So that's how the sound wave travel across. So if we were to plot this phenomena in a graph, which we have pressure against time, we can sometimes represent it by maybe a sine curve that looks like this. So these portions, this is pressure, this is high pressure, this is low pressure. So the peak of it is, this is what we call the amplitude. Okay, assuming that it's the same, right? I think my drawing is a little bit bad. So, so this is the amplitude. So this high, this point where the pressure is the highest, this is your compression point. This point where the pressure is the lowest, negative, okay, so this point is normal. This is your rarefaction point. So it goes through a series of compression, this is also compression and then rarefaction, and then it goes on across time. The length between two particles that are on the same phase, or if you look at it from a pattern point of view, you look at it where the pattern repeats. So I can look at mountain to mountain, so this is what we call wavelength. So this is one wavelength. I can also look at it from here to here. This is also one wavelength. It is also represented by the symbol, symbol lambda. Okay? The time taken for one wavelength to complete is called period. So same as your school period, what is one period? Maybe it's half an hour, maybe it's one hour. Period is measured in time, so it's measured in seconds. If we take one divided by period, we have the physical property which we call frequency. So frequency is measured in hertz. So frequency means in one second, how many patterns would we have? So here I have a pressure time graph. And let's say my time here is in milliseconds. So let's say the time period for uh, one wavelength to happen is 10 milliseconds. So period is equal to 10 milliseconds. If we want to find frequency, it will be equals to 1 over period. So 1 over 10 milliseconds, 10 times 10 to the power minus 3. So I will get 100 hertz. So it means that in one second, my waveform happens 100 times. So that is your frequency. Okay, there are a few things you need to understand about time, about sound. First of all, the loudness. How loud a sound can get, you can find out by its amplitude. So how high this goes determines the loudness. So you can maybe imagine it through a, like a hi-fi system. The louder it is, the higher it goes, the louder it is. Secondly, frequency plays a part in the pitch. So pitch is determined by the frequency. 
the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. So if I go very high pitch, so frequencies go like that. Low pitch, wider frequency. So higher pitch, higher frequency. One other formula that you need to remember with regards to sound, and this you use in uh, water wave, transverse waves, electromagnetic waves as well, is V equals to F lambda. So this is the relationship between velocity, frequency, and wavelength. So what you need to understand is for sound, what affects the speed is actually the medium. So if the medium is consistent, so in this case, let's say the medium is air. So it's consistent. Speed doesn't change. If the medium change, speed changes. Secondly, frequency is affected by the source. So let's say if the source has something that is very high pitch. As the sound travels, the pitch is not going to change. As the sound travels, let's say, from uh, air to a solid. So it moves from one medium to another medium. The frequency is not going to change. But as it moves to another medium, the speed is going to change. And because, let's say, if we are moving from air to solid, the sound is moving from air to solid. So speed is going to increase. The speed of uh, sound in air is 330. In water, in liquid, it's about 1,500. In solid, it can go to be above 5,000 meter per second, okay, or even higher. Maybe it's 6,005 for some solids. So why is that so? Because it is by continuous vibrations of particles. So in liquid and in solid, the particles are closer together. So as such, the passing on of energy becomes faster. Same as your concept of transfer of uh, thermal energy. So as it moves from air to solid, your speed is going to increase. But frequency is going to stay the same, so your wavelength will increase. So wavelength, most of the time, is it could, it's a direct result of this. There's a change in, in velocity, change in the speed. And speed is affected by medium. Frequency, most of the time, doesn't change uh, because it comes from the source. So this applies for your water waves as well. You always remember, frequency don't change. Velocity might change if the medium changes. So for example, you have your, your water waves that's moving from a deeper end to a shallow end. So as it move from part A to part B, the frequency of the waves don't change. But in part B, because the speed of the wave it slows down, so my wavelength must decrease. So this is the general relationship. The other formula that you will use in sound because of reflection, because of echo, is of course your speed is equal to distance over time. So this is already in your earlier topics. Now let's look at some of the questions in the papers and we will apply all these concepts. Let's look at this question from 2018. So we have five different musical instruments, A, B, C, D, E, producing sound waves, excess pressure of the sound wave above normal pressure is measured. And these are the graphs. So you see the different kind of quality of the waveforms. This will provide, in a sense, different sound quality. It means it sound different. Determine the frequency of the sound wave produced by instrument A. So they are testing whether you know how to read the graph. So when you look at this, frequency is equals to 1 over period. So we have to, from this graph, identify what is the period of the sound wave. So you see where the pattern repeats. So you can take from here to here, or you can take from here to here. So I'm going to take from the crest to the crest. So it's between 2 to 6. So it's 4 milliseconds. So you must always look at the scale. So F equals to 1 over 4 times 10 to the power minus 3. So F is equals to, so I get 250 hertz. So that's my answer. That you get one mark. Write down the letters of all the musical instruments that make a sound that is louder than that from instrument A and has a lower pitch from that of instrument A. So loudness got to do with amplitude, pitch got to do with frequency. So let's take a look quickly. So we want those that are louder than A. So A, your amplitude is plus 
0.1. So we're going to look at those that have crest as higher. So B is higher. This is lower. Let me just use a ruler to show you. So this is the line. This is lower. This is higher. This is lower. And this is higher. So the answer is simply B and E. So B and E. Okay. Lower pitch than that of from instrument A. So pitch is related to our frequency. So if we want lower pitch, we want to have lower frequency. Frequency is equal to 1 over T. So we are looking for something with a lower frequency means that we are looking for something with a higher period. So for instrument A, our period is 4 milliseconds. So we are looking for the sound waves, those that have periods that are more than 4. It means that wider than 4. So let's look at B first. So B, if you look at the repeating pattern, if you look at crest to crest, it's just from 2 to 4, so it's just 2. 2 is lower than 4, so it's not it. You look at C, crest to crest, so it is from less than 1 all the way to 6, so it's 5 point something. So C is definitely an answer because it's actually uh, higher than 4. Then if you look at D, okay, so when you see a pattern like that, it's important for you to find a distinct pattern, then you'll know when the pattern repeats. So in this case, let's pick the left corner. So from left corner to left corner. So it's from slightly more than 1 all the way to more than 3. So it is much lesser than 4. It's just maybe about 2 plus. So D is not the answer as well. Then when we look at E, uh, does the pattern even repeat within our scale of the graph? No, because the crest is over here. Then over here, you see, this part didn't even touch the top. So E's period is definitely longer than 7. Okay, So it's higher than 4. So our answer is C and E. Let's look at a similar question that came out in 2016. So loudspeaker admits in sound wave variation of air pressure with distance from a particular time is shown in the figure. So you see the amplitude actually uh, decreases across distance. Draw a line to indicate the wavelength of the wave and label this line W. So we want to look for the two spots where the pattern repeats. So I'm just going to take the crest and the crest. So this is my wave line, wave length, label it W. Mark a point to show rare refraction and label this point R. So the refraction is a point where there is the pressure is the lowest. So this is compression, compression, compression. So this is rare refraction, rare refraction. So this is R. I'm going to mark it. State what happens to the sound that is heard as the distance from the loudspeaker increases. So this is the part where they are seeing where you understand what's the implication of a decreasing amplitude of the sound wave. As the sound travels to a longer distance, amplitude decreases as shown in the graph. So this is my context. Therefore, the volume of the sound will increase as the distance from the loudspeaker increases. Okay, so you have your concept and context and your conclusion. So it's all here that will get you your one mark. Now we're going to look at two questions that came out in year 2019 and 2017. They are asking the same thing. So I'm going to go through it together. Describe how sound waves, how sound travels through water to the dolphin. So we have the trainer attracts the dolphin by slapping on the water surface as shown. Then over here you have two students did experiment to compare the times taken for sound to travel through rock and through air. They stand at equal distance from a small explosive placed in the ground as shown. Describe how sound travels through the air from the source to student B. So we're going to tackle these two questions together. How does sound travel? Basically, a source will generate vibrations through a medium which will cause a chain of compression and rarefactions of the particles of the medium causing the 
sound wave to move from one point to another. Okay, so this is the general description. What we need to do is to write this in our context. Here, in the 2019 paper, is the trainer is attracting the dolphin by slapping the water surface. So the source is the trainer slapping the water. So when the trainer slaps the water surface, it will generate vibrations through the, so in this case is water, which will cause a chain of compression or reflections of the particles of the water, causing the sound wave to move from the trainer to the dolphin. So that's how you're going to do this one. Then when you look at the other one, when the explosion is set off, it will generate vibrations through the air, because now this is from air, right? So it shouldn't be from the air, which will cause a chain of compressions and refractions of the particles of the air, causing the sound wave to move from the explosion to student B. So this is how you do it, okay? So that should get you your two marks. I will now go through the calculation portions of the question. So in this case, dolphin produced sound frequency 40 kilohertz. So take note of the prefix, the sound of water, speed of sound in water is 1600 meter per second. Calculate the wavelength of the sound waves in water. So what do we have? You have F, you have V, you are supposed to find lambda wavelength. So our relationship is V equals to F lambda. So we are supposed to find lambda. So lambda is equals to V over F. So speed is 1600 over frequency is 40 kilohertz. So it's 40 plus 3 more 0. Your wavelength would be 0 0.04 meters. You want to write in standard form will be 4 times 10 to the power of minus 2 meters. So this will be your wavelength. You should get you your 3 marks. Let's look at this other calculation question. So they have the teacher and the student standing about 100 meters apart. One holds a stopwatch, one blows a whistle, raise the arm, blows a whistle. Student starts the stopwatch when you see the arm raise, stop the stopwatch when he hears the whistle. Speed of sound is 330. Calculate the time taken for the sound to travel from the teacher to the student. Speed is equal to distance over time. Time is equal to distance over speed. So time distance is 100 meters divide by 330 so your answer would just be 0 0.3 seconds explain why the time recorded by the student is likely to be very inaccurate uh, it is mainly because the the duration of time is too short for the student to react from to react between starting and stopping the stopwatch. So that will be your part two. I'm going to look at this other concept question back in the dolphin question by 2019. Frequency of the sound emitted by the dolphin does not change when the dolphin moves from water to air. Explain why the sound waves have a shorter wavelength in air than they do in water. Our relationship is V equals to F lambda. So frequency remains unchanged. When the sound moves from water to air, so you have to ask yourself, what happens so when there is a change in medium water to air it will affect what does it affect does it affect speed or wavelength so i explained to you that it affects speed so how does it affect the speed in water they are closer together as compared to air so velocity will slow down so when velocity slow down and frequency remain unchanged wavelength will decrease okay so the main thing you need to write is as the sound waves move from water into air, the speed of the waves will decrease since air particles 
are more spaced apart with frequency remaining unchanged wavelength of the sound will therefore decrease okay so this will be your answer so that's it for your sound waves question